Let's all give Jesus a wonderful round of applause. How are you today, my friends? God is good and simply amazing. We spent the day together last Friday and and what a what a blessing it was. The power of God was there. So we are going to continue in the same faith here today because the Lord God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today and for eternity. Speaking of the Lord's will, let's take a look at something wonderful that happened to a person because the Lord God is still the same in operating wonders. Let's watch it now, shall we? My sister, what did you suffer from? I was feeling such a violent pain in my in my um your shoulder my here. Shoulder, How yes. long? Oh, it's been a few months that I have this pain. How about now? Now I'm healed. Look. <laughs> you couldn't do that, sister. No. Up to where? I felt like my arm was so hard. Your arm felt hard. Yeah. How high could you raise it before without any pain? Well, I couldn't do it before, but now I can raise it so high. Look, look for the honor and glory of Jesus. You can go now, sister. Let's applaud the Lord Jesus. We are the people. We are the people that love to applaud our Lord God. Speaking uh, of applauding our Lord God, I have a message for the people at our TV station. And it, it's in Ephesians chapter, chapter 5, 4, and the verse we'll read is 30. It's a good message in the name of Jesus. My dear friends, in Ephesians 4, verse number 30 is written the following. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. There are two important things right here. The first thing is that we should never grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And how do we grieve the Holy Spirit of God? We grieve Him when we follow the path of sin. But for the glory of God, I am not. Amen. So you're not grieving Him. But we grieve the Holy Spirit when He ordered when he ordered Paul to write something, for David to write something, and many others who were used to write something, and the, and the revelation is registered in the Bible, and we don't pay attention to the revelation. And then you, then you come to church or watch the face show, and God calls your attention to a blessing about a right that you have, folks, but you don't take hold of that. So what was the use? You grieved him. He taught you for what? Because he is ready to do that for you. Romans 8.11 says that the one of the missions of the Holy Spirit of God is to convince us of the justice, sin, and judgment, to guide us in the truth, speak to all those who can hear, and also to give life back to our mortal bodies. That is, that is written in Romans 8.11. It is not talking about spirit. It's talking about our mortal bodies. So if we don't believe, there is no way uh, he can give back our body. So what do we have to do? We have to fight. No, we have to believe because if we believe, we will see the glory of God. The Holy Spirit is God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when we believe this, He becomes the Spirit of truth. Who, who are we? What are we? What are we really? We are a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. The Holy Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth. And Jesus is truth. He and the Father and the Holy Spirit, all three of them are actually one God. So He is the one doing the work today. But we don't pray for the Holy Spirit. We pray for the Father. We pray in the name of Jesus. But He gives life back to your body. So you cannot grieve the Holy, the Holy Spirit of God. That's the first revelation. And the second revelation is, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. How can you grieve the one who, who is the real seal of guarantee of the day of redemption? You will be with Jesus forever. Amen. Let's take a look at an, an, another wonderful miracle that took place in someone's life in the name of Jesus. What is your name, sister? Maria Suarez. So this sister is from my family, <laughs> folks, Maria. Thank God. <laughs> Maria, tell us, what did God do for you? Well, I'm a seamstress, and when I'm cutting or stretching an elastic fabric, I feel a lot of pain. Today I was feeling pain when I was sewing, and now it's gone. The pain is all Thank gone. Thank God. Go keep on sewing, sister, because we need good seamstresses. Let's applaud the Lord Jesus, folks. Glory to God. Brethren, this week I studied the passage in Psalm chapter 4, and it was very good. I started studying it this week. Then I jumped to some other studies, and it is written here. This is King David speaking. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Every time that he is the God of your righteousness, he will listen to you. We have to understand what David was saying here. When he, when he is the God of my righteousness, when he reveals something to us in the scriptures, Jesus came to convince us, to re reveal to us, 
convince us of our sins, justice, and judgment. When he reveals something in, this, in the scriptures, it destroys all sins and their consequences. So that, he can, so that you can put God's word into practice, which is the act of judgment. And it is also for justice to prevail. You, you make your decision sovereign in, in your life. King David said that every time he put justice into practice, uh, uh, when, he put, when he put justice to practice, the Lord would become the God of his justice. If you don't put justice to practice, how is it going to be if you don't put it into practice? The enemy is the Lord of your sins. When you sin, you are giving glory to the enemy and submitting yourself to his authority. That's why we don't sin. What if we do sin, then at the same moment we ask God for forgiveness so that the enemy won't be sovereign over us. And if Jesus taught us that we need to forgive a person 70 times, seven in a day, if that person comes and confesses a sin to me, and I am a human, and the Lord is incomparable to us, He is infinitely, infinitely, infinitely in more merciful, forgiving, good to us, and he forgives us, he will forgive us. So if you sin, God, please forgive me. But don't start sinning, then asking forgiveness, then sinning again, again, again. Don't do any of that. It's from the enemy, and you should not want to do it anymore. God, please destroy this now. I don't want to even think about it. I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to practice this anymore. It is, it is something that belongs to the enemy, so I don't want it. Destroy everything in the name of Jesus. So when I make an act of justice, he is my God because he is the God of my justice. He revealed it to me and that action is mine according to what he revealed. If I don't do it, then I don't want to practice my own justice. I don't have my own justice. I don't have conditions to do something in the spiritual world to prevail there. But when God gives me an understanding, Lord, thank you. With this direction you gave me, I will rebuke all illness, rebuke all evil, and I will be blessed by you. The God will become the God of my justice and will hear me. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. When we are in distress, we think that there is no way for us. The pain is so big and the enemy and the enemy impresses you in such a way that we think there is no way out and that we went too far and there's no way back. And dear brothers, he is saying that in my distress, he will extend our territories, make them greater. All we have to do is to be steadfast in the scriptures and we will see that the tough situation is not, is not so tough after it at all. Now our territory has become, become larger and we can see what he has done on the right, what he has done on the left, take hold and win. What we need in times of distress is somebody anxious or in distress we need to pray because God enlarged our land. Dear God, I fell. I fell into this temptation, in this problem in this malignant action. And now I can't seem to find a way out, but it is written that you have enlarged my land. Then you turn to the Bible and suddenly you understand it. What seemed to be a huge mountain, the biggest mountain there is, suddenly gets smaller and it turns into this little grain of sand that all you have to do is flick it off like this, folks. And that needs to happen in our lives. It happened with David. He is pouring his heart out here, writing about how he won. And what else does he say here? Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. What can we learn from this? We need to be humble before God. In these 61 years of faith, I have, I've seen many people show up as some kind of beautiful, beautiful comment that would come and go away and it was all just a cloud of sand. Of sand. There, there was no essence inside. They were just very empty. You have to remember that you are a human being. You are flesh. Jesus told us to be diligent and pray so that we may not enter into temptation. There is no use in listening to the flesh. We might start giving into pride in our life, but there's no way at all. All of this comes from the enemy. It's a trap. And how does a person start falling into these traps when he, he thinks they can associate with someone dishonest or, or someone who does not respect the word of God? No, no, I, under, I understand. I know how things work. You don't understand anything. The Bible says that those who say they belong to God, but does certain things that are not, I can't even eat with them. I have to be separated with them. I have to consecrate myself to myself. Just like Samson, Samson thought he was my son. This woman is no good for you at all. She's the first, but I really like her and I want to be with her. He had a series of problems. Later on, Deliah 
And it doesn't matter how nice the person seems to be, she's phenomenal, she's everything I wanted. It's not just you, or even another sinner also wanted her. People who stand out receives a lot of attention. But the little fool thought that, 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 that now was his moment and Samson became blind. And the Bible doesn't talk about just women, but also opportunities in life. And the person trades the Lord for an evil demon. Paul talked about Demas when he left everything because of sin. And how many people are going to see what he was the prodigal son that abandoned all of the Lord's protection and threw himself in the world to suffer, to be disappointed, and to sin when he should really be steadfast with the Lord God and with the scriptures and be victorious in every situation. So he finally realized this and said, Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Brethren, if you are not feeling that you need to pray at all, if you are not feeling that, that, that you are straying away, you actually need to pray a lot, folks, because the world is corrupt and it fascinates. The doors are wide. It's very attractive. You look one way and see everything. They accept absolutely anything. The world will never rebuke you of anything. The world, will, the world will approve anything you do and you are falling into the hands of the enemy. And every day Jesus says that anyone who wants to follow him should deny himself and carry their cross. That is our mission. Remembering who we are is and was ordered to do so. And do it so that you won't be knocked down no matter what. God, uh, uh, God, God will surely hear you when you cry out to him as long as he is the God of your justice. In verse number two, it is written this, how long, O oh, you sons of men, he's talking to me, to you and everybody who was born in this world, will you turn my glory to shame in embarrassment, in pure shame? How long, how long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? Brothers and sisters, the glory of God has to be sought out. It, it, it is it, the light that our soul needs right at this moment. It is the discipline that our souls need right now. It is the teachings that we need to understand so that we won't do anything wrong and we will do what God wants to be done. So while we are not seeking the glory of the Lord, rather turning it into some shame, things go from bad to worse until one day the enemy comes with a fatal blow to you and then you lose all of your faith. Your faith is way down there and the problem is all the way up here and you won't have enough time to climb all the way up there. You will be left behind and be lost for all of eternity. Take a hold of Jesus today. Never let go of Jesus. Take hold of your position. Cry out to God because he will give you the victory. How long, son of men? How long, O oh, you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? God gave glory to everyone who hears the message that he gave. That which you felt and feel when you listen to the word of God, you learn what the Lord can do with and through you. The contrary to any lies the enemy told you because the devil will say that you have no conditions, that your family is no good, that you act this way, that way. Don't believe in the enemy. Believe in God. Because if you don't, then you are turning all of that glory in God gave you through his revelation into a shame, folks, into an embarrassment. And you will pay, and you will pay a very high price for that. And it will, it will cost a lot because you are opening yourself up to the enemy. I'm not saying that God is vindictive. Oh yeah, let me send that person a little bit of cancer. God will never send you any kind of cancer. No, God does not send any kind of disease into your life. He doesn't send anything because God's love for us is great. But when you disdain the glory he has given to you, and not just, just a disdain, but turn into shame and embarrassment, you suddenly think that you are great and, and, and all that. Speaking of someone who is optimistic, that there are others who are really, really, really pessimist. Oh, there is no way. How can you say that there's no way if God has spoken about you? You have to believe. You need to have faith. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You don't have to do anything more than submit yourself to the Lord and lift yourself up. The plan that you felt was not some kind of emotional experience, no. Oh, I, I, I will be used. I will be used in the name of Jesus. I will seek the Lord. I will always be steadfast in God and I will overcome any type of obstacle because I belong to God in the name, in the name of Jesus. And the obstacle might be very big for you, but it's a challenge for you. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. How are you not going to be victorious, brethren? How can you be defeated, folks? 
This is God speaking to our hearts today. How long, O oh, you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame, into embarrassment? Don't ever do this because God's glory is to give you victory in Him. Don't let anyone discriminate me for no reason whatsoever because you are the person, the being that the Lord wanted you to become when He called you in the name of Jesus. And he goes on saying here, how long will you love worthlessness? Forget worthlessness because everything will pass. Worthlessness, vanity, everything is vanity. Like the preacher said in Ecclesiastes. How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? Always seek the truth, brethren. Always love to seek the truth, the reality, and love the one who can turn you into a great blessing, yes. Let's pray right now. Bow your heads and close your eyes, please, because I want to pray for you right now. God, I am now entering into your presence in this holy moment. I have millions of people watching me in Brazil and around the world, people who are in need of your blessing, people who understood, and there are a few who did not understand what I am talking about, but, but are now praying along with me. They understood that we are praying and they have problems, Father, and I want to pray for them now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, in the name of Jesus, extend your hand to those people right now. Come bless them, come heal them, come deliver them. My God, these people are asking for your grace right now. And I lift myself up now in the name of Jesus. I paralyze all the works of the enemy. And I say, evil demon, get everything that is yours and get out of them right now in the name of Jesus. And you all say, amen. I believe. Let me ask a question here. How many of you here have a problem in your knees? I would like to pray for you right now. Those who have knee problems can raise your hands now. Stand up where you, where you are because I can pray for you now. Dr. Schwartz, I have problems. I am unable to move my knees. Look, the doctor said that I have to put it in a new cartilage. The kneecap is, is damaged. The meniscus broke the joints, whatever the problem might be. So if you have problems from the waist down, my leg is feeling heavy. I had thrombosis. Erypsilis, and I don't know what else, any problem you might have. Uh, let, let's believe, let's believe right now. But, but I don't want to pray so that later you'll lose the blessing. Same thing for those who are at home now, remain steadfast right now. Today is the day, close your eyes. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I am now entering into your presence and I am entering courageously so that these people can be delivered. I will now use the authority that you have given to me in the name of Jesus and the enemy will re be rebuked right now. And now I ask, O oh Lord, that you personally come and their knees, their joints, their cartilage, the meniscus, Lord. Anywhere the evil might be at, in the front, the back, in the posterior, God, it doesn't matter where the problem is. I will use your power and over by the ankle, Lord, over by the waist, the leg that had thrombosis, Lord, that had erysipelas, and the person suffers from this now. But now, God, O oh Lord of my justice, I use your authority at this very moment. I paralyze all the actions of the enemy, and I say, evil demon, your time is finally over. Grab everything that is yours and get out of here. I am not asking you. I am demanding you right now. I am speaking in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus get out of these people in the name of the Lord Jesus go away from that person in Jesus' name oh, oh, oh Lord Jesus it, it is your name I declare that these people are healed for your honor and your glory and you all say amen I believe Lord God now do everything you couldn't do before do everything don't be afraid don't allow shame and embarrassment take the place of God's glory. Dr. Schwartz, it was in my knees, it was in my ankles, it was here in my hips. I have been delivered now. Don't, don't sit down, folks, because the Lord is not done working on you yet in your life. Oh, Son of God, He is healing you right now. Who can say that the Lord has already healed? There's a lady right there. Go to that lady, will you? What is it, sister, with you? It's been over 15. She's so emotional, folks. It's been over 15 yes. years that I have used this here, custom made. What is that, sister? Custom made in souls. Uh -huh. Everything is written here. Uh -huh. The other pastor was there. Uh -huh. We were, what, we were what, praying. What was he saying? What was this? Keep, keep we talking. We prayed keep together talking. and he kept saying, be strong in the uh -huh. Lord. And now keep my talking. healing is complete. My ankle is keep, fine. Keep talking. And thank God I don't need healed. this anymore. Oh, glory to God. She is so emotional. Thank you, Jesus. 
Oh, glory to God. What happened to you, sister? My knee has been hurting for a week now. One week? Yes. When I go downstairs, it the, hurts. The, the, and when I got here, it was hurting. The pain is gone. But now, now. it's all gone. In She's the name coming of down Jesus. the stairs. The pain yes, is gone amen, now. Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Who else got better in her in the name of Jesus? Brother here up front. You can't be embarrassed, folks. You can't turn God's glory into shame, folks. Stay firm because the Lord is healing. Oh, glory to God. What happened to you there, brother? Dr. Suarez, for more than 15 days now, I have been feeling a really heavy weight in my leg as if I was carrying a load of bricks on each leg. And it was hurting so much that I didn't know how I was managing to walk. Uh, and now? Thank God I came here and now I'm You're healed, healed in the name, in the name of, Jesus. of Jesus. How about you, young lady? I was feeling pain in my knee. Now it's all gone. Pain in your knee? Uh-huh. How about in the front? I had two surgeries, one in August of 2014 and another one last February. Mm -hmm. And it left a sequel and my knee became rigid. But I determined today in the early morning that I was going to come here and be healed. And I received my blessing in the name of Jesus. You're, I you're don't he, you're accept healed now. it. Praise, praise be to God, folks. How about you, young lady? I was feeling pain in my legs. I left my house today in pain, now. but now, thank God, you will I'm be healed. healed. Oh, glory to God. How about you, brother? I was feeling a sort of, sort of weight in my leg, and now it's gone. How about you, sister? I um, felt a lot of pain in my spine, Dr. Suarez, uh -huh. and I was healed from the pain Same. because I don't feel anything. I went to the doctor and he said I don't have anything in my spine, but today I was feeling a strong pain in my leg. A yes, pain in your leg? but I am fine now. Thanks be You're to fine God. Now. I'm fine. How about you? You will be the last person I today. Was, I was feeling pain in my leg, but now it's gone. It's gone. Everyone else who has been healed, raise your hand up and say, Jesus, thank you. Let's applaud the Lord Jesus. You may sit down. Let's all watch the real life drama now, shall we? Our financial life at home wasn't anything great. We never had enough. If we bought some rice, we couldn't buy the beans. Our life was complicated. Sometimes we didn't even have gas for the oven and we had to make a fire outside to, to cook. And it was really bad. At the end of the month, we knew all the bills we had to pay, but couldn't. I was even afraid to add up all of the bills. And then when the day came to pay the bills, we, I was always afraid because sometimes the bills would be pretty high and I would always try to have a little money left for the next month because I wouldn't be able to buy the groceries. It was something that made me very upset because I was always at home with my wife and they would ask for things I couldn't afford to buy. And I couldn't do anything. It was very difficult for he me. He worked at the power plant, so it was difficult because his salary was small. Well, I always dreamed of working, working with my, my own self-employment. I always told her that one day God was going to help us and I was going to buy a truck for me to, to work. The Lord knows our thoughts. The first step towards victory was taken when Sonia took hold of a special calling. I thought I met Jesus around 10 years ago, but I really got to know Jesus the moment I decided to become a sponsor of the work. Around four years ago, Dr. Suarez was here, and I always wanted to be one of them, the sponsors, so I took advantage of the opportunity. At that moment, I really got to know Jesus because my life started to change. Since I met Jesus, I have a desire in my heart to wake up early in the morning and pray to God. I really wanted to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. I watched Dr. Suarez's program on TV, and he always said, if you haven't, ask God, ask God. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and, and up until the end of the earth. The Sonia is then baptized by the Holy Spirit of God and the blessings continue. God was working and these things were getting better. It got to the end of the month and it seemed like God was the one who paid it all, all of the, all of the bills. And then we managed to pay everything. One day I was praying to God and I said, Dear Lord, we don't have a car to go to church. So we always walked to church, but that never stopped us. And back then I didn't have a license. I got my license after a long time. Then we got a big truck. God said that it is better to sell the car and buy a truck so we can become self-employed. Then the company let me go and I said, thank God they are firing me because now it's time for me to buy a truck and work for ourselves. We are self-employed now. He delivers to farms or anywhere else people call him. He goes 
and I stopped working as a housemaid and I work with him now. After that, it's been a blessing. We are now constantly growing and the salary that we used to make before is now multiplied and we're going to give our tithes and our offerings and we are now pillars in thy church. It's the Lord who hears us when we call on him because I walk in the Lord's direction, not just me, but us in our home. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Till today, when we talk, we say, only God can do these amazing things because there is no other way, you know. There is no way I can explain to you how we got these things. Today, thanks to the Lord, we have plenty. We now pay our bills on time and we even have some money left over to go and eat at expensive places. Today, she grabs my credit card and goes to buy whatever she wants. She doesn't even have to tell me. She just goes ahead and buy what she wants. I thank God bowing down to him every day. A heart of thankfulness because God is the only one who could do so many things. There is no way that I can live without God. I can't live without him. I drive, I travel, I'm always giving the directions for both of us together. And I'm always with him. I'm never alone. Oh Jesus, this is so beautiful, Jesus. This man is not transforming the glory of God into infamy and shame, folks. Let's go to our first question now, shall we? Dr. Soares, what did Jesus mean when he said, when he said that he was bringing the sword in Matthew 10, 34? He is referring to spiritual warfare, brother. We have to live in peace with everybody, with everyone. But spiritually speaking, we are at a war against all kinds of sins. So we have to pray with strength. We have to be steadfast because the Lord God work is never in vain. Let's stand on feet so now so we can pray for you. Bow your heads and close your eyes now. Father, we can never transform the glory that you've given to us. Your holy word, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the name of Jesus, the forgiveness of our sins, the dignity, the deliverance that you have given to us. We cannot put these things into shame, dear God. Quite the opposite. Father, I unite my faith with the faith of these people who are praying, no matter where they are in the world. And I declare now evil, get out of these people, leave them right now, don't oppress them anymore. Your power is now broken. Get out in the name of Jesus.